I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Diego Estan, the Electronics Measurement Specialist for Soundstage. Diego, how are you? I'm very good. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing terrific. So I appreciate you joining me today. We're going to talk a little bit about the Soundstage Measurement Program, and uh, I guess the first question is, tell us about your role in measuring components for Soundstage. Sure. So I guess to start, maybe... Um, as you know, Jeff, Soundstage has been committed to uh, measurements for a very long time, since almost the beginning. So we've been doing uh, speaker measurements for uh, something like 20 years uh, at uh, Canada's National Research Council in Ottawa, where I live. And it's where uh, the founder of Soundstage, Doug Schneider, lives. So actually, I, I'm often finding myself helping him schlepping speakers in and out of the anechoic chamber <laughs> to take those measurements. Um, and we've also been, so those are the speakers, we've also been doing electronic measurements uh, for a while, amplifiers, preamplifiers, and we've been using, um, we used to use BHK Labs uh, in California. That caused a bit of logistical issues, just shipping back and forth, so we weren't able to maybe measure as much as we wanted to. So coming up about uh, two years ago, I'd say, Doug was seriously considering purchasing an audio precision analyzer so we could start doing the measurements ourselves. So that would be the latest analyzer. You can see it behind me, the APX 555B series uh, analyzer. And uh, and where I come in is that I've been with Soundstage for about three years, and I also happen to have a, a, an educational background in electronics. So when Jeff, uh, when Jeff, sorry, when Doug started seriously thinking about doing this, um, he uh, he talked to me and asked me if I wanted to take over the role of measurement and he wanted a commitment from me before he went and invested in the audio precision, which is a significant investment. Uh, I didn't think about it too long. I was very interested. I wanted to do it. Um, so here we are. The investment was made. The AP lives here uh, in the uh, in the electronics measurement lab, which is actually a spare bedroom converted in my house. And uh, I've taken over the role of, of, take, of doing the measurements. I do a lot fewer reviews now. I, I do mostly measurements because there's a lot of stuff that comes in. Uh, but I still do the odd review, and it keeps me very busy, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. So you mentioned the audio pr uh, precision. Tell us about that. I know that's the primary tool of your trade, and I know it's a very flexible uh, machine. What 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 can it do? Yeah, it's it's uh, we'll just refer to it as the AP instead of saying audio precision. It's a bit quicker. It's it's a very sophisticated piece of kit. Uh, it's a, it's also very expensive. Uh, I see it as basically three parts. Um, it is a high precision ultra low distortion signal generator. So it'll generate signals both uh, analog and digital if you get the, the digital board as well. So that's what gets sent out to your device that's under test. And then uh, on the other side, you have a, a high precision uh, signal analyzer, and you can use it as a scope, you can use it as a voltmeter, but most importantly, as a spectrum analyzer that can generate fast Fourier transform. So you can look at the signal peaks, the noise peaks, all of the harmonics, and it's very high precision, high resolution. And then the third part um, is the software. So you can kind of see behind me, there's there isn't any screen or user interface on the on the AP. So these spectrum analyzers of, of a few years ago had screens and user interfaces and buttons. That's all been moved into the computer that controls the AP. And so AP has developed a very extensive uh, software suite, the APX 500. Uh, the manual is 800 pages long. It, it's a very extensive. There's an endless number of measurement possibilities. And that's how you control it. You control it on your computer and you choose the measurements you want and all the parameters you want. It's very flexible. And of course, they can update the software whenever they need to. And then we do the standard measurements that you would normally see. So, you know, signal to noise, THD, THD plus N, frequency response, intermodulation distortion, crosstalk. And for DAX, you know, we can look at digital linearity, uh, impulse response to look at different filter types, um, immunity to jitter, those kinds of things. And we can do sweeps, of course, we can sweep versus frequency and, and output signal. So very flexible and a very good piece of kit. So has anything surprised you since you began doing measurements for Soundstage? Yeah, a few, a few things. Um, like I mentioned, I had an educational background, so I understand the fundamentals of, of what the measurements are. But of course, I had never used the software before. I had never used the AP before. So there's definitely a learning curve. The software is extensive. So, you know, it took me months and probably hundreds of hours of fiddling and I started measuring my own gear, you know, the day I got it because I was pretty excited. 
Um, so it took a while to get to get up to speed on on the, all the measurement options and all of the parameters inside there that you can tweak. So that took a while. Uh, then the other thing was, you know, deciding on what we want to publish. Um, you're spoiled for choice. There's so many options that you really do have to narrow it down. It's not a good idea to just publish, you know, 100 pages of graphs and measurements because no one's going to look at it all. So trying to decide what you want to measure, what you want to show, what you want to focus on took a bit of time. And there was discussions internally at Soundstage and with industry experts as well to try to try to figure that out. Then there's the parameters to settle on for each measurement. Also, also took some time because there are different parameters that you can use. Things like the bandwidth uh, for the uh, the measurement, you know, the reference signal, and these are the kinds of things that manufacturers often don't necessarily publish when they publish their specs, which makes it a bit tricky as well. You got to make educated guesses as to what they did to try to make a, an apples to apples comparison. Um, and a very specific thing that I also learned uh, that's something I knew intuitively was uh, with power amps, the difference between a shared 15 amp circuit and a dedicated 20 amp circuit for the amplifier that you're measuring in terms of maximum power output. You know, I knew that I'd have to use a dedicated 20 amp circuit for high power amps, but I didn't think it would make much of a difference for lower powered amplifiers, but turns out it did. Um, that was a little bit of a surprise. So now, you know, every amplifier that gets measured is definitely on its own dedicated 20 amp circuit. So for the soundstage reader, for the for the folks that are reading our reviews, primarily on soundstage high five where your measurements appear, the the the, the question that I think most people would have would be, well, why would you want your gear measured? Why would you want to read measurements of a, a product that you're considering? What would what how would you answer that question? I'd answer it in a, a few different ways. Uh, I think one thing that's nice about having more individuals and more publications and more enthusiasts out there measuring is that it may keep the manufacturers honest. So I'd like to think that when a manufacturer publishes something that it is an honest measurement and it's not overblown due to marketing. So I think if there's more people out there measuring, it may it may kind of pressure manufacturers to keep them on. So that's one good thing. Another thing is I think it helps enthusiasts shop for gear, certainly the ones that want to look at the measurements and are, are, are technically inclined to do so. You can't obviously go out and listen to everything, but if you have a good library of published measurements, you can look at them and maybe you can rule some stuff out that just doesn't measure well or certain parameters that are important to you. So it could help shop. It also gives, I think, prospective buyers the full picture. So if you have a, a subjective review coupled with measurements, you kind of have uh, a full picture of, of the product. And I think lastly would be for real expensive gear, which I know you're no stranger to, Doug, uh, I keep on messing up the tug in the jet. I, I know you spent a lot of money on audio gear. Um, so I'd like to think that if I was spending a lot of money on a piece of kit, you know, bleeding edge uh, kind of uh, prices being charged, I'd like to know that there's bleeding edge engineering and parts quality that has gone into the products. And uh, the only way to reliably do that is to, is, to, is to measure it and to see if it really does measure really, really well, commensurate with the price. I agree, and and certainly before I buy something that's super expensive, I want to see measurements, obviously, as well as listen to the product in my home, examine the build quality, you know, all of those factors come into play. So there's no question that the measurements are just another series of data points that you can use in making that purchasing decision. I, I want to let people know also where they can find your measurements. Uh, as I said earlier, Primarily Soundstage Hi-Fi, although I don't know that at, at this time, I don't know that it's going to be limited to Soundstage Hi-Fi, but that's, that's where you'll find Diego's measurements, um, at least right now. But the other place is SoundstageNetwork.com, and that's where all of our measurements, including our speaker measurements that Diego mentioned, that's where all of the measurements are housed and archived. So you can see speaker measurements that go back many, many years, and Diego's measurements as well as being in the review on Soundstage Hi-Fi, will be archived individually on soundstagenetwork.com. So I wanted to let people know exactly where they can find those measurements. Well, Diego, thank you so much for the, uh, you know, for the tour of the AP and of what you do. And uh, I just would encourage everyone to check out that little measurement link at the top of most of our reviews on Soundstage, Soundstage Hi-Fi, and uh, you'll be able to see Diego's work Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.